While the digital economy keeps growing, the number of women who join the tech sector is actually on a downtrend. Why is this so? And what can we do to reverse this phenomenon? Here to tell us more is Lucia Del Carpio, INSEAD Assistant Professor of Economics. With Maria Guadalupe, INSEAD Associate Professor of Economics and Political Science, she is the co-author of an upcoming study on internalized gender biases in the tech sector in Peru. Lucia, thanks for joining us and welcome. Thank you so much. First, what motivated you to study the topic of uh, gender divide in tech? We were observing these very stark occupational patterns. You know? There were some sectors that were really men-led. How were people actually making those career choices? Is it really that no, no women was interested in technology? Or was it that maybe there were some societal norms, some gender norms, something about the identity we built a society that was mainly influenced the decision? So that was like our broader uh, motivation. And we said, let's start studying this. So you found out about a company in Peru whose mission is to help women learn how to code. Almost every woman that they train gets a job, but the problem is that there are too few women who apply. How did you get involved? We have this amazing opportunity for women, and then women are not taking it. And so we said, like, well, we know what could be going on. It's like, so we started looking at how they were selling the program and of course they were very technical they never said why are we a program only for women so we said i think i mean we thought this is the way of going forward what we did is like we randomly selected you know half of this public interested on them to receive the traditional message they were giving to them and to the other randomly half to the other half randomly selected in those we did our intervention which basically said why are we doing a program only for women? Because we believe women have the ability to succeed. We have already trained 100 women that are working with success in the tech sector. Um, we are not only training you, but we are creating a network of women. In Peru, only 7% of people working in the sector were women at the time. So we said, people have not seen women in the tech sector in Peru. So a key part of the intervention was also to provide a role model. How did the women receive the message? When everybody came into the, into the, um, let's say, into the address, into the website, into the URL, we used one of these softwares, you know, that is used usually for marketing, A-B testing. Mm -hmm. So we were able to go and randomize is what type of messages these women were going to, the interested uh, applicants were going to see. Out of the total traffic that we were able to generate to the website, that was around 5,000 people, 5,000 women, we were, we roughly half saw the, traditional message and half of them saw the, uh, our, our treatment, no, our, our intervention. What did you find? In the group that saw the traditional message, 7% got interested and registered and applied for the program. And in our treatment group, we raised it all the way to 15%, which allowed the pool to be much larger. No? So that is the first result. We were very successful in really attracting more women into the tech sector. But for us, importantly, we didn't want our research to end up there because we were also interested what type of women you're attracting into the program. It's a good thing of having a longer term relationship also with Laboratoria, with this uh, training provider, was that we also participate in their <clears throat> screening process on their selection mechanism. They, they test some coding abilities, some cognitive abilities, some, but also non-cognitive abilities. So we were able to compare what was the average let's say, quality of the people who saw the traditional message and the average quality of the people who saw actually our treatment. On average, people who saw our treatment message sort of like we reduce on average a little bit the quality, but you select the best because we had a lot more people applying. So it's like win-win, no? more applicants, but also more quality applicants. In further testing, you examined what part of the message uh, resonated the most with the women applicants. Uh, after the company saw that our treatment was really successful, so we sort of like achieved some capital with them and they allowed us to do a follow-up experiment. So instead of working on Peru, we migrated to Mexico in which they were starting. So what we did is like we did just with, with the same technology, you know, based on the applications online, instead of just having two messages, now 
the f now the full message, the message with, the, with our treatment was, let's say, the base message. And we one by one pull out randomly as well, as being randomly assigned, each of the elements of the, of the treatment. So one was the, the fact that you were telling them women can be successful in tech, the other one was the role model, and the other one, as we said at the beginning, was just the network, that we are training a network of women. The role model was really the most significant component. The component of like the, the company telling them that women can be successful in tech and really reassuring them that they have the potential to succeed was also important. And the network effect, it was not very important. What are the key takeaways? What impre impressed us a lot on this is like, if you think about it, it's a very simple intervention. We added one paragraph saying why this program is only for women. And then we added a story of a real woman that had taken the program about how she was able to a bit change their life. And with those two components, we were able to double application and not even that, to increase the quality of the applicants as well. So this points out to the fact that it's like, it's the, the bias is there and it's very important. And moreover, if we do it in a, in a, in a careful way, you can be able to correct it. So from the, pol the policy implications for this are huge. When people are making very important choices in their lives, we have to be very careful how we are advertising, sort of like the information. You want really people to choose something where they are going to thrive, something they really like, something where they can be good and not, you know, just being shy about it just because, you know, it's like maybe, you know, there are too many men or I don't see women. And so that, that is our main takeaway, you know, that we, we, we could do a lot of policy out of this. Hmm. Well, thanks, Lucien, for being with us today. Ah, thank you. Mm -hmm.